Generally speaking, I'm one of the biggest James Harden fans that you'll find, especially among mainstream analysts. I'm constantly defending him against travel truthers, against people who think his game's a gimmick, or that the step back is bad basketball, or that he's not an amazing passer, or any of the other ridiculous, selfish ball hog, Eddie Johnson type things people have said about him. I love James Harden. You can even find a 20-minute film study I did about him pinned at the very top. But I will say that he's not immune from criticism. And last night, I think, was a perfect example of when the numbers go wrong, when sometimes analytics take it a little bit too far. Houston Rockets obviously have had a lot of success with the way they've played, but they still haven't gotten all the way. I think a portion of that has a little something to do with the style and a little bit of a refusal to take a mid-range jumper. Let's check out the film from last night, give you a better idea what exactly I'm talking about. First of all, you see, again, James Harden, when he's guarded one-on-one, -on -one, you know, he loves to get to that step back three, which, you know, fine. He generally makes a lot of them overall, I think, on that step back three. You know, people estimate it 34 35%. It's a good three. It's a good shot for him. It's pretty unguardable. It's a cheat code. But on nights when he's not making it, you know, when he's getting it kind of knocked away from him, blocked, whatever happened there... He does have to be able to sometimes find other solutions. It's about having solutions. And if he's not making threes, something to consider is occasionally taking a mid-range jumper. We all get it. Threes, rim, layups, free throws, the most efficient shots in basketball, for sure. Okay, so I don't even mind. Yes, he missed a layup here. It's not a bad look. Okay, but just to give you a feel for how this video is going to go, again, look at Oklahoma City's coverage. They had the big. Every time, P.J. Tucker, usually the screener, the big was all the way back in the paint, basically daring James Harden right here to pull up, stop on a dime, and take this shot. And that's a wide-open free-throw line jumper that I promise you James Harden, like Chris Paul, like Kawhi Leonard, like DeMar DeRozan, Jimmy Butler, the best mid-range shooters in the league, can make that shot around a 50% rate. And if he's not, it's because he's not really taking them and he doesn't shoot them. But he has been able to do that in his career. Here's another example right here where, again, Mike Muscala, the big, so far back this time. Oklahoma City's game plan basically was go over the screen whenever possible. So what that means is it made Harden not really be able to pull up for the three off the dribble, which he's really good at, right? If you go under, say, this screen, Harden can stop behind and take the three. And even if you go over, sometimes he's able to kind of rise up right here and take the shot, right? But, again, Oklahoma City did a good job jumping up into the ball, making Harden feel you a little bit. So he didn't feel comfortable enough to rise up right here when he's thinking about Schroeder coming from behind him. But, again, what he does have probably right here, wide open elbow jumper. Okay, he passes it up. Yes, Ben McLemore is a great shooter on the season, having a really good shooting year. Do I hate this look? No, but you know, look at the score. Feel for the game. It's a 10-point game, middle of the first quarter. Your threes aren't going in. They end up 11 for 40 from the game. Right here, do you want a shot that, yes, gives you three points and might be a 34, 35% shot? Or do you maybe want a shot that has a 50% chance of just getting you back in the game, keeping it an eight-point game, a six-point game, a four-point game, possessions? These are instances where the analytics don't totally get it that, yes, I know the expected value is higher. I know overall not I'm not tripping on a Ben Macklemore three, but there's something to be said for cutting away at a lead, chipping away slowly. It's like when you play basketball, they say there's no 20-point shot. You just have to hit a bunch of singles sometimes. Here's the very next possession. Speaking of singles, here is another wide-open one. Harden gets him with a step back. This is a wide-open 15-foot maybe jumper. Doesn't take it. Dribbles back out to the three-point line. Does the same thing basically from three, right? So if it goes in, yes, I understand it looks a lot better. But this shot is rhythm right here. He right here has him. you got to take this shot. Dribbling back out to take this contested step back off the dribble. I mean, that's just, again, it's a significantly lower percentage shot. Higher effective percentage shot, sure. But effective field goal percentage is not the end-all, be-all. Here you see Schroeder, again, going over the screen, which, again, means right about here in this pocket, even if it's a floater, runner, whatever, Harden has that wide-open mid-range area. Mike Muscala is not respecting that at all. Harden is not making the defense even worry or care about him in the mid-range at all. Again, a pretty open three for P.J. Tucker, but you look at the numbers, P.J. Tucker, I believe, has only made like four threes all season from the top of the key. He's a corner specialist, kills the corners, not really so much up at the top, and for good reason. He doesn't really make them.
Again, not a horrible look, but I promise you the Rockets left a ton of points on, on the board. You look at it again, mid-late second quarter, you're down 14 points. You have 36 for the game. Right here, P.J. Tucker sets a good screen. Again, mid-range, wide open, wide open. Ferguson did a great job all night, one of the best defenders in the league. Recovers. And so now what's ending up happening? The pick and roll is not even doing anything. Because if we just do this and they're not switching it, and Harden's not going to pull up and take this mid-range with the defense, the big, not even respecting it at all, what's going to happen is Ferguson is able to catch back up. So now the same man's guarding him. Pick and roll did nothing. Now it just turns into ISO basketball, which again, yes, the Rockets play plenty of. Harden ends up getting to the rim for a pretty decent floater that he misses. All right. So again, not the worst shot in the world, not the worst solution in the world. But again, when I say solutions, I'm talking about just having tools in the toolkit on nights when threes aren't falling, when your floaters and shots at the rim aren't falling. Sometimes you need something a little bit different. Again, Ben McLemore is a great shooter, but is this a great shot right here? With five seconds on the shot clock, we put no pressure on the defense, ends up just kicking out to him for a contested, well-contested slot three. This, to me, isn't a phenomenal rhythm shot. It's not a wide-open shot by any means. It's a well-contested tough three. Again, you can't just look at Ben McLemore. Yes, okay, he shoots 36, 37, whatever percent for the season. But we have to adjust these shots somewhat for the context. Every shot is different. This shot, not a 36, 37 percent shot. I don't even care if his shot chart says from this spot he shoots 40 percent. You're not shooting like a shot chart. This is not practice shooting. This is game shots. That might be in the course of a game, a well-contested three like that, 30 percent, maybe less. Again. Look at this. Steven Adams. Capella setting this time. Wide open. Wide open. Take the shot. Take the shot. Dribble back out. Put no pressure on the defense. All right. P.J. Tucker maybe had a corner three there. Passed it up. Now back to Harden. It's another ball screen. Now we got two on it. P.J. Tucker has a wide open mid-range shot. He's going to try that Draymond float pass. All right. Again, not the worst thing in the world. Not inexcusable, but their absolute refusal to ever take a mid-range jump shot with the exception of Russell Westbrook hurts them sometimes like here again 16 point game they're going again for the home run for the triple after triple Harden's shot just wasn't falling that night he didn't have his legs on his step back was not making the shot and he ended up missing a whole bunch of them just like that You see it again here. Tucker sets a good screen. Schroeder goes over. So Harden can't rise up from three. But right here, can he rise up? Yes. Look at him continually just dribbling it back out. P.J. Tucker ends up getting called for the offensive foul. This time, they were a little more aggressive. With Gallinari getting up there. But he even sees Harden thinking so much about the three, seeing, okay, my man's running to the screen this time. I'm going to take the three. So, again, that's another well-contested three. As good of a shooter as James Harden is, again, as, as good of a shot as this might be effective field goal percentage, to me, it's not a really open shot. Not a great shot in the flow of the game. Do I hate it? No. But, again, the Rockets ended up getting an offensive rebound there. Russ took a three. Tucker took another top three. Again, another empty possession. Again, we talk about effective field goal. What's Russ shooting from three on the season? 23%? I think we know by now. I love Russ Westbrook to death. He's just not making threes. So on situations like this, can we keep the defender on our back maybe and get to this pull-up right here? Can that maybe James Harden 45-50% shot likely be better than this 40 effective field goal percentage Russ three? I think so. Again, just turned into the ISO show after the ISO show. And again, they don't really respect Russ all that much out here. So once again, yes, some people in the analytics community, you know, are all about just threes over long twos no matter what. But is this a good three? When you're Houston, you know defenses don't really care if Russ is shooting them. Again, on a night where you shoot 11 for 40 as a team, shouldn't we have something else in our toolkit, some sort of play to get James Harden going? Shouldn't he have the confidence on this one? Not on coaching even, not on whatever it is. This is, I mean, come on. Look at this. Guys on your back. Pull up. Right here. That's a pull up. Look at him. He's looking around, trying to find him again. Ends up 
Ferguson's able to guard him again. Nothing happened from that ball screen. Completely useless. They just neutralized their own offense by not even taking that shot. Again, dribble, sidestep, okay? I love watching James Harden play. I don't get the whole boring, boring thing. Last night was boring. This game was boring. This game was like actually the poster for the people that are infuriated by watching him play. So again, it can work. I'm not hating on their style. I'm not saying they can't win the way they do. They certainly win a lot. They're certainly a very efficient offense. But again, in games like this where the defensive strategy is what it is, you have to do something to make them get out of this strategy, to make them respect this jumper right here. Because if they don't, and if they're just able to play you straight up and Ferguson's able to keep getting back to his own man, and the pick and roll does nothing, it ends up turning into a James Harden back down that only gets Macklemore an open three because Schroeder kind of just fell asleep for a second. All right, but again, is this, yes, it's a wide open three for Macklemore, but he wasn't in a great rhythm this game. This shot wasn't really within a great flow of the offense. Not tripping on Ben Macklemore shooting the ball, not tripping on the look it ended up generating, but if Harden had a wide open mid-range look early in the shot clock, I think you have to take that. You look at it in comparison, Oklahoma City's offense. First of all, just look at the threat that having a mid-range jumper presents, right? Look how much Clint Capella has to be up at the level of the screen because he's worried about Gilgis Alexander taking the mid-range jumper. He's up and aggressive on the screen to start. What that causes, P.J. Tucker has to pull in, tag the roller. You end up getting more threes that way from even having it as a threat. The kick-out pass for the corner three opens up a lot of times because of the <laughs> because you hit the mid-range jumper. Chris Paul, of course, one of the best mid-range players of all time. You see, he gets to his spot. He elevates. The Thunder, I love this. Billy Donovan, you see, he's not putting restrictions on guys. There's, he lets guys read the game of basketball. If you come off the screen and Capella's going to be all the way back, again, it's a wide open shot. Take him. That's a great look. Again, in the course of a game, 16-35, possessions matter. Sometimes the higher field goal percentage shot matters. And again... If they respect your mid-range shot, what happens? The big's up more like Clint Capella is here, and that's going to allow the roller, Stephen Adams, to get behind the defense. If Austin Rivers isn't in to tag him, it's a dunk. That's created by the threat of the mid-range. Again, a useful tool in the toolkit. Schroeder, get to his spot, elevate. We saw there was 15 clips in here where James Harden could have done this very exact thing. Come off the screen, nice and tight, guys behind you, lift up, get to your spot, easy money. That shot is so easy. Don't believe me? Here's Chris Paul again. You come off the screen, the big's back. I don't get if it. I'm not sure if it's Daryl Morey, if it's Mike D'Antoni, if it's James Harden himself, but the Rockets need to consider taking that shot. There's wide open in games like this. If they don't, there's going to be more situations in the playoffs where the offense just becomes stagnant, where teams figure out how to game plan for them a little bit, where threes aren't falling and Houston struggles. It's not black and white. It's complicated. Analytics make sense. The way Houston plays makes a lot of sense for their team and their personnel, but they're not perfect. They should consider taking the occasional open jumper. Thanks for watching. Make sure you thumb up, hit that subscribe button. Scout with Brian, Twitter, Instagram, the Scout with Brian podcast. Talk soon.